Well, it looks like the lack of national decks isn't the only problem Pokemon fans have with Sword and Shield. Take a look at this, for instance. <laughs> He tried it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> now, as a huge Pokemon fan myself, stuff like this really hurts to see. This is exactly why I try to discuss the issues in the way that I do. I want to point out the issues that we, the fans, have with the games and talk about them in a thoughtful and constructive manner. Which, yes, sometimes includes giving Game Freak tough love by showing them exactly where they're going wrong so that the games can be improved and are held to a reasonable standard. After the last video that I uploaded, I was kind of taken aback by just how many of you cared as deeply about these games as I do. I saw many people commenting and posting tweets saying that the Pokemon Company and Game Freak needed to see the video, and it was evident to me just from the sheer amount of support that the video got and how much it was shared around that we as fans do have influence when it comes to these things. That's why in this video I want to make a direct appeal to Game Freak and the Pokemon Company. Here are five things that they need to do in order to fix the Sword and Shield games and, in light of the recent National Dex controversy, possibly save the main series as a whole. Let's get right into it. The first thing that they need to do is communicate with the fans and recognize their reception to what's been shown so far. Now this is something that Game Freak and the Pokemon Company have always been notoriously bad at, but it is needed now more than ever. The internet and the Pokemon Company's social media have been absolutely flooded with poor reactions to many aspects of Sword and Shield, and especially about the lack of national decks. When you have millions of fans expressing their disappointment about your upcoming games in what is likely the biggest negative reaction crisis in Pokemon history, you would think that you might actually recognize this instead of entirely ignoring them, which is only going to stir up resentment. The fans are paying customers after all, and if a customer at a store was disappointed in a product, a store worker would probably listen to their concerns and actually respond to them instead of, you know, just walking away. Never mind if it was millions of customers. Instead, we have them carrying on as if nothing has happened, posting stuff like this. I don't know about you guys, but I don't care about Aerodactyl's damn teeth right now. I'm more concerned with the literal millions of fans starting an uprising about a terribly poor decision you made in the home console games that we've been hyped for since we were kids. And Game Freak is not really any better. The only reason we've heard anything from them was because media outlets asked them about the situation in person, to which they pretty much just explained why they're doing it. A message from either of these companies just saying, Hey trainers, we've heard your concerns about the upcoming games and are working to reach a resolution, would do so much to quell the panic that millions of people are feeling, and the debate that is reaching an unfortunate level of intensity. The next thing they need to do is recognize the significance of the Sword and Shield games and develop them with that significance in mind. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Game Freak needs to think of the fans' perspective of these games and the context behind them. We're recently coming off a generation that wasn't very loved by the fanbase as a whole. Sun and Moon were considered to be okay games, but then Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon didn't add a whole lot in terms of quality or content compared to the past third version games, and then instead of Diamond and Pearl remakes, which would have been the pretty standard thing to do at the end of a generation, we went back to Kanto for the sixth time if you include Yellow, Gold and Silver, Crystal, Fire Red and Leaf Green, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which was a complete trajectory change to appeal more so to the Pokemon Go players instead of main series fans. Overall, it was definitely one of the most disappointing generations, and aside from Sword and Shield, interest in the main series has arguably been at a low point. But I think we as fans were willing to endure this so long as we knew development was happening on what we have all been hoping for forever. A fully main series new generation on a home console for the first time. And it's been confirmed that development on Sword and Shield actually started right after X and Y in early 2014. Whereas the junior development team was tasked with developing the Gen 7 Sun and Moon games, the senior development team went straight to Sword and Shield. 
Having so many glitches and graphical problems in the demo and the first impression of the gameplay is at this point unacceptable. In addition to not having Megas or the full national Pokedex available even in the post game. Gen 6 for instance had to deal with remodeling all 721 Pokemon and their forms from scratch into 3D format from 2D sprites, had to create new forms of old Pokemon using Mega Evolutions, and had a proper set of remakes. And this was all shortly after an amazing Gen 5 which itself had brand new moving sprites, 156 new Pokemon, and great sequel games in Black 2 and White 2 with lots of post-game content. To have gone from Sun and Moon, to the barely different Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, to the sixth remake of Kanto, and then not to have an impressive display for the first new generation on a home console, especially considering bigger Pokemon is this generation's gimmick, is immensely disappointing for fans who have been giving everything a pass hoping that Sword and Shield would be worth being patient. This is all made worse by the fact that we know Game Freak isn't putting nearly all of their people and resources into this game, which leads to the next thing that needs to happen. Stop working on side games during Sword and Shield development. A lot of people don't know that Game Freak actually has a huge chunk of its 150 employee company working on an entirely separate game called Town, which is being developed simultaneously with Pokemon Sword and Shield. To truly make the game that Pokemon fans have come to expect, and I would argue deserve, this project needs to be indefinitely delayed in order to allocate all of the company's people and resources to the proper development of Sword and Shield. Game Freak's best side game ever has been Yoshi for the Game Boy, which sold 3.1 million copies. For reference, Game Freak's worst selling main series Pokemon game was Pokemon Crystal, which sold more than double that at 6.4 million. In total, main series Pokemon games have sold over 250 million copies, meaning that Pokemon accounts for over 97% of Game Freak's all-time sales, even though they were in business making games six years before Pokemon even came out. Game Freak needs to invest themselves fully into the franchise that has changed hundreds of millions of lives around the world, and from which fans have been hoping for a home console new generation game forever, instead of simultaneously working on something brand new when the stakes are the highest they've ever been. If they could somehow manage both, that would work out okay, but if the amount of time and effort required has been too much to include the Pokemon we've grown to love in the games, and they're unable to make the games without serious graphical issues, then they should not be cutting their workforce in half to pursue something else, especially with the backlash they're going to get from the overwhelming majority of their fans, and especially if that side game looks better, graphically speaking, than their main video game series. Next, Game Freak and the Pokemon Company need to include all the Pokemon in the games. Given the fan reaction and the state of the fan base, I think this is something that needs to happen no matter what. This is something we've covered thoroughly on the channel for the past few days, and I've given my reasons for this in those videos. But reading comments over the past few days have given me even more reason to believe that this needs to happen. I've read tons of stories from you guys, including one where a guy had his friend's copy of a Pokemon game that was given to him before he died. And he wants to be able to transfer those Pokemon to the latest games and let his friend's favorite Pokemon experience the games that he never got to. It showed me that our Pokemon have our own subjective, deep meaning to us, and that should not be confined to the past. Some people's favorites are going to make it into the game, while others are arbitrarily going to be kept out, and that will only serve to divide the fanbase further. The competitive metagame is restricted, there's less freedom and things to do in the postgame with less Pokemon, the Pokemon that people have spent hours upon hours training and or shiny hunting will be left behind, I could go on forever. Allowing these Pokemon into the games does not hurt or harm anyone, but not allowing them hurts many, as evidenced by the state of the fanbase right now. This needs to be fixed. This can be done by allocating more employees from the town game to the Sword and Shield team in order to complete the models. Updating the games a couple months later with a patch, similar to how Pokebank usually only opens up a few months after game releases such as with Sun and Moon, or at the very least allowing Pokemon Home to serve as a battling app as well, since all Pokemon are able to be transferred in Pokemon Home, which it seems that they actually might do since Game Freak has said that they want to include more actual gameplay elements in Pokemon Home, but that still doesn't allow us to take our Pokemon throughout the Galar region, even in the postgame. And finally, they need to recognize who their fans truly are. The lack of Game Freak and the Pokemon Company being in touch with their fans is something that I've noticed since Masuda claimed in 2014 that kids these days don't have the patience and attention span that they used to due to mobile devices and the internet, and so they need to ensure that games are becoming shorter, easier, and more about instant gratification. 
Along with this statement came a trend that has made Pokemon games much easier since about X and Y. And from what I'm seeing going on with Sword and Shield, it seems that Game Freak and the Pokemon Company still don't understand their fans very well, especially with the decision to cut the national decks. Many of us have grown up through most, if not all, the generations. We have favorites from all different generations, and we enjoy the more competitive aspects of Pokemon like competitive battling. By cutting Pokemon from the game, not only have you limited our options and made the game less diverse, but you've also cut out the memories that we've had with the Pokemon franchise. Yes, younger kids might not be able to remember many of the other Pokemon and might not care for competitive battling, but it's not like they gain anything from Pokemon being cut out, whereas your older fanbase loses a lot. And that older fanbase is not to be underestimated. Yes, Pokemon is primarily marketed towards kids, but in my experience, there's a massive percentage of the Pokemon fans who are 16 or older. Even looking at my YouTube demographics from millions of views on a strictly Pokemon channel, 94% of my views are from people 18 or older. And this raises another point. The Pokemon Company and Game Freak need to be more in touch with content creators too, who influence thousands if not millions of Pokemon fans hugely, serve as ambassadors for the franchise, and could really help make a difference if they were reached out to for their opinions, since they're of course so passionate about the franchise that they've made it into their jobs. Pokemon content creators see the opinions and interact with numerous fans every single day, and are often very knowledgeable about the franchise itself. They could help advise the direction of new games to ensure that they meet fan expectations and wants. It's evident that there is a wall between Game Freak and Pokemon fans, and content creators could be the bridge that links the two so that their visions of the future of the Pokemon franchise are compatible and as successful as possible, and so situations like the present one are avoided in the future. Overall though, Game Freak and Pokemon need to be much more responsive to their fans in general. Well, there we are everyone, five things that Game Freak and the Pokemon Company can do to fix Pokemon Sword and Shield and ensure a successful and enjoyable game for all Pokemon fans. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications on for more Sword and Shield content. You guys absolutely blew me away with the support for last week's video, so I just want to take this moment to say thank you for subscribing and staying tuned for more. Each one of you helps to get these ideas out there for others to see. Don't forget to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think should happen when it comes to Sword and Shield, and check out the links in the description to connect with me. That's all for now, and I'll see you guys in another video.